Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to do a sample ASVAB arithmetic reasoning test. I'm only going to do the first 15 to 30 problems. And what I'm really going to start doing now in the future weeks, maybe even a few months, is I'm going to work my way through this book. I've got a lot of comments that say, well, is there a book available? How could I you know, fill in some of my deficits? I went through a bunch of different books. I came up with this book. Uh, I've gone through this whole book. It's a fantastic book. It has two different practice exams at the end. I'm going to go through both of those exams first. And then if you want to follow along, I'll put a link to this book. Um, you could either do a PDF or you could buy the book on Amazon. You could follow along and work on the exercises that you're a little weak in, you need a little better explanation of. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on the arithmetic reasoning um, practice test. I'm going to jump right into it. You should have a notebook in front of you. Pencil, do the problems before I do the problems. Unpause the video, watch how I do them. I'm going to show you a lot of tips and tricks on standardized tests. All right, let's go ahead and get started on these problems here. Have a notebook in front of you. What I would do is pause the video, do the problem, unpause the video, and then watch how I do it. Even if you got it right and you know how to do it, I might have a trick to help you do it a little more quickly. So again, there's 30 problems in about 36 minutes. So there's about a minute per problem. So you don't want to spend a lot of time on any one problem. If you're spending too much time on that problem, you want to skip it and move forward. If you're going to skip problems, you want to mark them up. Actually, you want to mark up every problem as much as you can, really circling key ideas, key thoughts, showing all your work. So when you go back to it, all your work's there and you don't make any careless mistakes. If you're taking the computer-assisted test, so you're not paper and pencil, you'll still have scratch paper. Don't just scratch all over that thing. Nate, number your problem and show all your work. Stay pretty well organized so you could go back to that number in your scratch paper. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Pause the video, do number one, unpause, and watch how I do it. What is 5% of 480? You can multiply all that out, or you know that 10% of 480 is 48. So 5% will be half of that, so I cut 48 in half, and I get 24. Those are the kind of tricks you need to go through this at a pretty quick pace. Number two, in two successive years, the population of a town increased by 15% and 20%. Well, I know it's not going to be 35% because they're not asking you to add those two together. What percent of the population is increased? So let's just say that population was 100, easy number to work with. That population of 100 is increased by 15%. That's going to give you 115. Then that is increased by 20%. So 20% of this, uh, I, I won't even look at the 5, will be 22. So 22 and the 115 would be 137 or so. So 137, I rounded down, so 138. So how much did it increase? As I look up here, there's nothing even close. The only one even close to 3738 is answer C. Okay, number three, the mark price of a computer is D dollars. Its price is decreased by 25% in January and then increased by 10% in February. Um, what is the final price? Again, I think I'm just going to pick 100 bucks because it'll be an easy number to work with. So the mark price of the computer is $100. It is decreased by 25%. So now it's $75 in January, and then later increased by 10%. So 10% of 75 is 7.5. What is the final price? So something near 82, and there it is right there. Whatever dollar that is, it's 82 cents on that dollar. I mean, I had $82 because I picked 100 bucks, but if it was $1, it would be this one right there, answer B. Problem number four, again, pause the video, do the problem, and then watch how I do it. Unpause and watch how I do it. Last week, 24,000 fans attended a football match. This week, three times as many bought tickets. So this is a 3x right there. One six of them canceled. So this is a pretty similar problem. First thing I'm going to do is just drop those 
three zeros off. I'm just going to work with that number 24. So 24 attended a football game this week, three times as many bought tickets. So three times 24, 72. Then one six of 72 canceled their tickets. Let me look down here and see where I am. Uh, there's really only one that's going to be one six less than 72. It'll be 60,000. I could probably just guess that one right there. But if I want to figure out one six of 72, I know that, uh, let's see, six goes into 72. What is that? 12 times. So it'd be 12 down, it'd be exactly 60,000. So, okay, problem number five, the average of 13, 15, 20, and X is 20. So the average is all the values divided by the number of values. So here I have one, two, three, one I don't know, four values. So the average of these, or all four of these added up divided by four, it needs to be 20. What is the value of x? Well, if the average is 20 and two values are below 20, let me look at my answers. There's only one value above 20, so that has to be my answer. It has to be answer D, right? For all four of these values to add up, be on average, be equal to 20, two of them are below, one's at 20, the fourth one has to be above 20. And I can figure it out, or I could just look at my answers and see the only one above 20 is D32. Number six, in 99, the average worker's income increased by 2,000 per year, starting at 26,000. Which equation represents income greater than the average? And here's what the values, the variables stand for. So income is going to go up every year and it's going to be greater than. So here's income is greater than, income is greater than, income is less than, it can't be those two. Because right here it says greater, so I have to have the greater than symbol. And then I start at 26,000, I go up 2,000 per year. This is saying I go down 2,000 per year, it doesn't make any sense. Only logical answer, answer A. Okay, number seven, pause the video, then watch how I do it with it unpaused. Jason deposits 15% of 160 into a savings account. What is the amount he deposits? So I just got to figure out the 15% of 160. Pretty easy number. 10% of 160 is 16. Half of that is 8, right? So 10% is 16. 15% is the 24, the two together. And they're actually asking, what does he put in the bank? Correct answer, answer D, $24. If you're still with me, congratulations. Uh, you're going strong. Just keep working at this. The more practice you do, the better you'll be at any exam. Um, so number eight, if 150% of a number is 75, they're saying some number times one and a half, 150% is, that's an equal sign, 75. And then there's a second part of the problem. Then what's 90% of that number? So I'm trying to pick a number here, times one and a half to equal 75. Well, I can split one and a half in the third, so I have a half, one, one and a half. And I'll split 75 in the thirds, 25, 50, 75. And if I put 50 in here, 50 times one and a half would be 50 times 50 plus half of 50, 75. So I know this number right here is 50. Now that I have this number, then what is 90% of this number? So I take this number, multiply it by 0.9. 9 times 5 is 45, and I can see correct answer, answer A right here. Number 9, again, pause the video, do the problem, unpause the video, watch how I do it. What is the remainder when 1454, 1454 is divided by 7? Well, 7 is going to go into 14 twice with 0 left over. 
I bring down the five, it doesn't go into the five. I bring down the four, seven goes into 54, seven times, give me 49, right? 49, what's the remainder between 49 and 54, right? So this is gonna be, ah, 40, I'm out of room. 54 minus 49 is five, and that's my remainder. Answer C right there. Okay, number 10, the score Emma was half that of Ava, and the score of Mia, so I have Emma, Ava, and Mia was twice out of Ava. If the score of Mia was 40, so Mia has a score of 40, what's the score of Emma? Let's go back and decode this problem again. The score of Emma was half that of Ava, I don't have that, and the score of Mia was twice that of Ava. So this is twice of what Ava got, so I know Ava got a 20. Now let me go back one more time. The score of Emma was half of what Ava got, so half of 20 is 10. Correct answer, answer A. Number 11, Mr. Jones saves $2,500, little mustard color there, over $55,000. What fractional part of his income does he save? First thing I want to do is look at my answers and see they're all um, going to be integers with 11s and 22s into them. So I just have to reduce. I'm going to knock out two zeros, knock out two zeros. Now I have 25 over 550. I don't quite see it there, but I do see that 25 will go into here once. So 25 goes into here once. 25 goes into 500 20 times with 50 left over. 50, 25 goes into 50 twice. So 500 divided by that 25 gives me 22, right? So this is going to reduce to 22. So it's 1 over 22. What I'm saying is 550 divided by 25, because that's what I reduced by there, goes into here twice to give me 50, 50, 25 goes into 50 twice. One over 22, correct answer, answer A. I think we're done with that mustard color. Number 12, 16% of what number, well, I don't know what number that is, so I call it X, is 72. 16%, I could convert that to a decimal. Think of this as like a little arrow going over one, two places. So 0.16 times the number is 72. Getting my variable, my unknown, by itself, I divide both sides by 0.16. This thing's by itself. If I do that to the left side, I gotta do it to the right side. So 72 divided by 0.16. 72 divided by 0.16. I'm gonna move this decimal over one, two. 72 goes over 1, 2. So how many times does 16 go into 7,200? Looking at the answers right now, I don't know if I could actually isolate any of them yet. 16 goes into 72. I double it to get 32. Double that to get 64. And that's it. So it's only going to go in there four times to give me 64. 72 minus 64 is 8. And I could keep going with my division, but is there any number up there starting with a four? There's only one of them up here starting with a four, and that's answer D. I could stop my division right there to save some time. Number 13, 55 students take an exam. 11 of them fail. What percent passed? So that's a little bit of a distractor because it's giving you the number that fails and you want a percent that passed. So I'm going to do the 55 minus 11. It's going to give me 44. That's how many passed. 44 of the 55, that's the fraction that passed over the total. And then I want to convert that into uh, percentage. So let me look up my answers, see if any of those could be eliminated. These are very clearly eliminations because 4 over 5 is about 80%, certainly more than a half. Um, and I think you could just, rather than multiply all this out, you could see that 4 over 5 is 4 fifths, 8 tenths, or 
Um, so without having to figure it all the way out, this is the only answer that's close, answer D. Number 14, a bag contains 18 balls, two green, let me write out what we have, five black, eight blue, a brown and a red, brown, red, and one white. Let me make sure I have them all contained here. Two plus five is seven, eight is 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have all 18. If 17 balls are removed from the bag at random, what is the probability that a brown ball has been removed? Well, maybe a better way to think of it is rather than a brown remove, think about what's the probability that a brown stayed behind. Well, there is only one brown out of the 18, so the probability that a brown stayed behind is 1 18th. There's only two options, either it stayed behind or it was removed. So that, uh, since it's binomial, the fact, the idea of it being removed would be 17 out of 18. Right? The, the probability of it staying behind is the 1 out of 18. Therefore, the probability of it being removed is 1 minus that, or 17 out of 18. Answer D right there. Number 15, what is 0.5749 rounded to the nearest hundredths place? This is my tenths place, my hundredths, my thousandths, my ten thousandths place. So what is it rounded to the nearest hundredths place? That's that number there. These are below 0.5, so I round this down a seven. So it becomes 0.57, correct answer, answer A right there. I think I'm gonna split this test into two videos. So um, as soon as I do the next 15 problems, I'll put a link in there. Um, I sure hope you enjoyed this video, or maybe not enjoyed it, but learned something. The more you work at it, the better you're gonna do on any standardized test. And the key to doing well on the ASVAB is acquainting yourself with the exam. If there's something on here you really don't understand at all, I'm gonna make videos going back through this book, doing the problems in the book. So if you really just don't get proportions, there'll be a section on proportions. Or if you really don't get probability, there'll be a section on probability or functions. So I appreciate you watching this and supporting it. If you liked it, please go ahead and hit the like button, share it with your friends who also might be studying for an exam. And if you need a channel, think about subscribing. All right, thank you for watching.